Hey, what's up followers? Dave here from CNC3D. So in today's video, we're gonna be showing you how you can quickly and easily change over between one controller to another on your GRBL-based CNC controller. So this video has come about because there are quite a few people that have been replacing their existing X-Pro V5 controllers or other GRBL-based controllers on their CNC to one of our CNC3D Nighthawk controllers. So in order to make the process as easy as possible, this video here will show you some of the things that you can easily do in order to make for an easy transition. So in this particular case, we're going to be taking a look here right now. We've just got our CNC 3D Commander software open, and we are going to connect up to this virtual X-Pro V5 on here. As you can see at the top, it's definitely an X-Pro V5. So for those of you who are changing over to a night hawk there's a couple of things we can do so the first thing that we should do is go into the profiles tab after connecting to your old controller and basically just hit the save button down the bottom now it'll ask you if you want to save the current machine profile let's just say yes to this and let's just call it uh, my machine backup and if we hit OK, you can see that there is in fact a profile on here right now. So now basically what we would do is we would go ahead now and obviously you would disconnect from your controller in here and you would go ahead and do the process of retrofitting through to your new Nighthawk following the same wiring pattern that you would have done with your X-Pro V5. Um, and then basically when the time comes, you should be able to go ahead and connect up to your Nighthawk and then basically load your profile on. So let's go ahead now and do this uh, virtual retrofit here and then show you how you can load your new profiles onto your Nighthawk. A few moments later. Okay, so now basically we have gone ahead and we have swapped out our old controller and we have connected up our Nighthawk as per the Nighthawk setup guide. And so basically it's now time for you to be able to quickly and easily load your settings onto the new Nighthawk. So we've just got the Nighthawk controller connected up here via USB. So it's just a good idea, just in case the COM port number has changed, is just hit the refresh button and just check through the available ports that are there so we've got com 11 here so let's just go ahead and choose that and we'll go ahead and connect so as you can see now that we're connected to the nighthawk at the top here it says nighthawk cnc 2.3 dual axis so this means that it has the latest 2.3 firmware on there and specifically it's the dual axis homing version so basically now's the time to load your settings on so the easiest thing for you to do is just go into the profiles tab here we're gonna choose the original backup that we made from the old controller, and we're just gonna hit send to machine. Now that's just gone ahead and completed successfully. So what this theoretically will do is this will load a lot of the uh, settings that you already had on your old controller. If we click on the view button down here, we can see exactly what settings are going to be sent to the controller. So this should theoretically do uh, all of your steps per millimeter. Your axis directions should already be done. And you should also have your maximum travels and homing loaded uh, if you already had homing and your max travel limits done. So that is how easy it is to basically go ahead and load your settings. Now, in the event that you do need to do any fine tuning on your controller, so it might be a good idea, you should theoretically be able to start jogging the machine straight away, or if you do have homing enabled, you may need to just click on the home machine button to allow the machine to actually home first. Um, and then basically you should be able to go ahead and actually just jog the machine around and everything should be ready to go for you. Now, if for some reason it is not, or you're concerned about the distances with which the machine is traveling, you can easily access the uh, Axi Wizard within the measurements tab here. So if we just click on measurements, you've got this X and Y motor tune button here, and you've got a Z motor tune option as well. So if we just click on X, Y motor tune, 
you can see that it's asking you to give yourself some space around the outside of the machine. So to do that, you can choose to use these jogging buttons on the side here. We'd probably recommend picking some small numbers here just in case we are asking it to move one millimeter and it does move 100 millimeters. That could potentially be an issue. So maybe definitely have a little bit of a play in jogging the machine. And if you're confident with it, then look at actually getting it set up. If you do notice the machine is moving in the incorrect direction, we can look at addressing that very shortly once we know that our distances are indeed correct. So if you wanted to now, you could go ahead and just click on step two. And there's a couple of options here for you. You can either choose to attach a pencil to the side of your Z axis, which is going to put a mark down on your spoil board. Alternatively, if you do have a laser, it would be a really, really easy way for you to be able to uh, draw a really nice line that you can measure. Um, and you can choose to tick this box down here and then choose obviously your laser on option um, and your power level as well for that. And then basically you can go ahead and go to step three. And then now it will ask you to complete your respective axis tests. So in this case, we have uh, run the Y axis test now. And what you wanna do is essentially just measure the distance that it actually traveled. So in this case, Y axis measurement should be 200, but let's say you moved 198.2, then you could just put that number into here. And then obviously, if you want, you can run the x-axis test now as well. Now, if at any point when you do click on one of these buttons, if something doesn't look right or it looks like it's going to collide with the side of the machine, definitely hit this emergency stop button over here and that will stop the machine from moving. So just be aware that's a good little safety over here. But definitely take a read through the instructions as we go through here as well. So let's assume that everything here is perfectly fine. We'll just complete the test there. So do you want to send the updated values to your controller now? We would recommend definitely doing that. And that will actually update all of these numbers with the correct steps per millimeter based on the numbers that you entered in. As you can see, this, this used to be 160, it's now 161. So we've done all of those mathematical calculations for you. Now, if you wanted to do the Z axis, you can click on here. And we give you a rough idea of how you can actually do this using a set of vernier calipers. Obviously, as before, definitely take a read through here and just make sure that everything is looking right. And then you can basically go ahead and run the Z axis test, just specify your distance here. And then you can just measure what distance you actually ended up with. And when you hit complete test, we will ask you if you want to again update your settings. So we'll just say yes to that. And that will go through and change that number if you've made any changes to it. Now, you should theoretically be good to go at this point in time, but if for some reason something isn't right for you, a very easy way, like let's say for example, your, your X and Y axis is going the wrong direction, you can go into the axes tab here and you can choose to toggle these tick boxes on here if you wish to change the direction of a particular axis. So for example, the X axis or the Y axis or the Z, um, and basically after you do toggle the X and Y, say for example, these were going the wrong way, you can hit update axis direction. And basically we're gonna go through and see here, it says we recommend completely powering off your controller for a full five seconds. Definitely go ahead and do that. Just before you do that, just hit disconnect at the top here. And then basically you will turn your controller off for around five seconds. And then basically you should be able to go ahead, just hit refresh and check if the COM port has changed. You can then go connect and it will go ahead and load all of the settings off the controller for you. And you should basically be pretty much ready to go. If you did want to go through and set up your maximum travel limits, they can be found in the peripherals tab at the top in Commander here. And they're on the right hand side. So we've just got some theoretical values here. Now, if you wanted a slightly friendlier approach to doing this, you can actually go ahead and use the new machine wizard that's built into Commander, which is something you may have seen when you first connected up in Commander and may have simply dismissed. If you have done that, there's a really easy way that you can recover this particular wizard. So first thing to do is just to disconnect from your controller and then go into settings. And there is a button on the general tab within here 
that just says reset machine wizard. If we click on that, then the next time you go ahead and connect to your controller, it will actually prompt you to go through the new machine uh, setup wizard. So uh, most people will usually say my machine is already set up. Keep in mind that this option by default is ticked so that it won't actually um, it won't actually show up again the next time you go to run through this, but you can recover it from within the settings. So you can click on go to new machine wizard. Now, if you have already loaded a factory profile on there that you've saved from your old controller, you can pretty much skip this step here and basically just click on this go to access setup uh, button. And again, you do have the configure my travel button here. If you click on that, you can see it takes you back into the access test wizard. So let's assume that the travel is definitely right. This part here will ask you to set up your direction of travel. So we can ask it to go right five mil. So did it move right? Yes, it did. Then we'd move on to the Y axis. So did, did it move towards you five mil? If you say no to this, then basically we will go ahead and change your axis direction. So ask Y to go towards you five mil this time around. Yes, it did. And the next question is ask Z to go up. So did Z go up? Well, yes, it did in this case. And then you can go ahead and set up your limits and your homing. So if we go ahead here and click on invert limit type, you can see that it has toggled over. Now with the Nighthawk, the Y axis and the A axis are inherently linked together. So if you don't have a bridge in the A axis limit port on a Nighthawk, then you may notice that Y is definitely triggered. It's something that you can address after the fact. Um, more importantly, take a look at what X and Z are doing, that if those switches are not triggered, these should be green by default. So if we were to bridge out the A limit pin on the front of the Nighthawk, then you would notice that this Y axis would also be green as well. Now we are doing this on a theoretical Nighthawk just on our test bench here. So it doesn't have the standard breakouts for the purposes of this video, but basically you can just go through and set up all of your basics. Now, the next thing is obviously um, you would go ahead and home your machine. Um, definitely take a read of these comments in here that tell you that if something doesn't look right, like for example, if it's going the wrong direction, um, then you're going to want to hit this emergency stop button on the side here. Otherwise, homing will never complete. It should go, the Z should travel first and go all the way up. Um, and then basically you can go ahead and just follow through these distances on here um, for you to be able to set up your soft limits after homing. And then pretty much you can just hit complete wizard and all of your settings will automatically be updated on your controller. And theoretically, you should be good to go with your new Nighthawk controller. I hope this helps, guys, and I hope you had a great day. And we'll be putting out some more awesome content in the near future. So please stay tuned.